Down 0 2, maybe got to focus on a contact hit. He's going to go power. He's not worried about it. He's absolutely not worried about it. It's at the wall. Great slam by King K. Rule. It's time, folks. Welcome on back. It is the Triple SL. It's the craziest goddamn baseball league you'll find anywhere west of the Mississippi. Uh, I don't know why I said West Mississippi. Maybe there's a crazy East of the Mississippi Baseball League. But regardless of that, we're in Baseball Kingdom. We're in Bowser Jr.'s Playroom. And you are joining me for the Triple SL, the Super Slugger Sim League, the craziest baseball league on the internet. Folks, I'm Alec Rome, and we are back after what was a pivotal and crazy game six that categorically changed the outlook potentially of the season. The Daisy Flowers losing on the road to the Bird Elbows who put up 14, but they didn't make it easy. Almost had a chance to come back near the end. And with all those things, let's take a look at what happened last time we were around. The Mario Fireballs were the ones to jump to the top of the standings. They jumped to the top after a nice job from them. They ended up beating Diddy 7-2. And they have that giant run differential, of course, if you weren't here with us before, folks. This is a 22-game season. The Bowser Monsters, uh, they've been on a bit of a skid. I think they've lost two in a row. Uh, and that included giving the Yoshi Eggs their first win of the season. The Yoshi Eggs able to get off of the zero mark and get to the one mark. And they're in the 10th spot there. Still very much outside looking in here for a playoff spot. The Bowser Jr. rookies desperately need a win, and that loss last week really hurts their chances. They're about two games back from a playoff spot, and they're facing the number seven team tonight, Bowser, in our opener. And we're about to play some baseball. In our first game of the night out of three, it's the Bowser Monsters on the road at the Bowser Jr. rookies. Tristan's team started off a little bit rough. They lost their first game. Then they won three in a row, and uh, the scoring, particularly all the home runs from league-leading home run hitter Bowser, were a bit scary. But since then, Bowser has been on a hitting skid, and so has his team. They've lost two in a row, and they certainly don't want to lose one to Junior tonight. That would be a bit embarrassing, and it probably would allow Bowser Jr. to take them over in the standings and have a shot towards that final playoff spot. But again, very long season to go here, folks. It could make a big difference, though, if the Bowser Jr. rookies and Caden's team can find a way to recover. After what was, they had the lead. They hit a solo shot, Green Hammer Bro. I believe it was probably his fifth of the year. Solo shot in the bottom of the six to have a shot to just all they needed was three outs in the top of the seventh they win the game on the road and instead on the last strike they let up a two rbi single and could not get a score in the bottom of the seventh so they drop to two and four and they would like to stick it to the big man tonight um, and I think they have the tools necessary to do so and I expect this to be a high scoring affair uh, one way or another somebody's going to hit some home runs tonight. It could be multiple, and I think it's a great game to start things off with. First, as we always do, let's take a look at the visitors for the Bowser Monsters. Boomerang Bro is back in the pitching spot on the mound here tonight. As I probably take a look at some of the stats, uh, Boomerang Bro, I believe, has been doing not too bad for this team. He's pitched 14 innings and has just a 2 ERA, which definitely puts him amongst the best in the league. He's second in the league in ERA. And for the home team, Bowser Jr. rookies, pretty much the same. Not too much change here. Blue Magic Koopa does get the nod again. That is not necessarily surprising. Um, they've kind of been going back and forth between Bowser Jr. and Blue Magic Koopa, and will occasionally throw the green one in there somewhere. But And those are the rosters for game number one. I really don't know what to say about this one. I think this could go either way. Um, but I'm a little bit worried that if the Bowser Monsters get off to a good one, uh, and, and start hitting homers that this will just be out of reach early. But this is a different ballpark, folks. they got taller walls here, those crackers. Uh, and, of course, you got a good outfield for this team. I surely expect that this is not going to be a case of this team going quietly into the night. So let's start off our night with the first game of three, the Bowser Monsters on the road to Bowser Junior Rookies. Thank you so much. you got five of you in here already. I really appreciate you being here. 
Thanks for sticking with us through that little break. There will be some more breaks in there, but we got a lot of baseball in the month of May, and it's a great way to start it here. Let's play ball! Lead off here. single here for him, and Bowser will jump in. It's a ball on him. Again, Bowser, nine home runs, but he has struggled in the last couple of games. He's had some one for fours. This is not a struggle, though. Goodbye! His 10th home run of the year. The first player to hit double digits in the home run column. And it's quickly two to nothing. Cannot say I'm surprised by that, folks. That will bring a Boomerang Bro, who is also impressive himself. Again, uh, 869 ERA for Blue Magic Koopa. It's not going to improve very much. Boomerang Bro has two home runs on the year, and this team overall has 14. This is swung on. It will get down to left field. That left field's pretty deep as well. Green Toad will swing it in, and Boomerang Bro will try to keep things going. Again, 2-0, folks. Top of the first here from the playroom. You're watching the Triple SL, craziest baseball league on the internet. That is for damn sure. We saw it last week, game week six and game week five. The last two weeks were something. Bowser Jr. is also not too bad. He He's... He's average, I would say, but that is going to up his average and gets two on with one away. Bit of a missed throw there, wild throw. Gets him on first and second, but Bowser Jr. also with his 10th hit of the year, now batting around 400. Here's Green Hammer Row, though. This team's best power hitter, 12 RBI, six home runs. Could really use a seventh, but he swung and missed on that one for the first strike. Gonna look at this one, though. Big drive. Deep to center field, but they could be there in time. At the wall, he's got it, Tristan does, for the second out. It is a father-son dispute. This is a deep ball, but it looks like it's pulling just foul. You see the shadow there on the ground. So it's one and one here on Blue Magic Koopa. Takes another swing at this one. This one will get down. Bases loaded with two out. Two out here for Green Toad, who surprisingly also has two home runs on the year. Or maybe he just has one. This one, though, fell off. I thought he had two, but he got his first one, I believe, last week, if I'm not mistaken. Green Toad this time. We'll get this one down, and it's a 2-1 game. RBI single for Green Toad. Mitch, you do not play tonight, my friend. Uh, you play tomorrow. And by the way, uh, one of our owners, Mitch, congrats on your six-year anniversary. And that's why, enjoy that. Enjoy it, okay? Enjoy the, the good time in Mexico. Play tomorrow. I think you play uh, off the look. That's a ground out 4-3 to end the inning. That's okay. Cool. I wanted you uh, like to. We got Saturday, too. Saturday is another full uh, sweet. Uh, a full sweep, sweet. Uh, what is the word I'm, S word I'm looking for? I don't know. Shit. I don't know. <laughs> Slate is the word I'm looking for. Jesus. <laughs> On the ground, it's going to be, oh, just one. And, oh, Blue Critter thought about rounding that corner there. They get the first out. There's runners on second and third here. Again, top of the second in a 2-1 ball game. This one line to Green Magic Koopa. That is the 4-6, and that is the end of the inning. So, didn't even want to take a look at him. This one is on the ground for the 4-6-3. Call that the end of the inning as well. Two away here out of seven potential. Bowser due up here. He just hit a homer. That is the difference in the game, folks. It's two to one. Can he add to the difference? He sure as hell looks like it. It's deep to left field again. Will it get over the wall? 11th of the year. 11th homer of the year. And by God, it just will not end for this man. You put it over the plate, and he absolutely smokes him. Charbroiled barbecued baseball, and it's 3-1. to one. Welcome in the couple of people that just joined us here. Home run by Bowser. He has two on the evening, and Blue Magic Koopa is done quickly. Uh, I'm not surprised. He pitched about... And that one is going to be a line out to Caden to end the top of the third. It's a single here. We do have two on in the bottom of the third. Bowser Jr. looking to get things even. This is on the ground. It just passed Monty Mullen again. He cannot recover from that. Uh, Green Hammer, bro, expecting him to maybe go yard there. 
but he does not. It's bases loaded, nobody out for Blue Magic Koopa with an opportunity to get this game tied if he can put it in the outfield, but he's down in the count 0-2. Star pitch, no, not from Boomerang, bro. It's straight over the plate into left field. It's going to get down. One's getting home. Second one try, and Bowser Jr. will get home to tie the game. Blue Magic Koopa with a two RBI single himself. He has five on the year and is batting above 400. Nice job to get this game tied at three. Boy, we had a lot of tie games in the last couple weeks heading into the deep part of the game, uh, deep innings, the sixth and the seventh. And this one might not be any different. Bowser will step in. He still has about a 4.67 ERA through about 19. But boy, oh boy, the bases are loaded still with nobody out. You need to get somebody out here. But Goomba could ground into a 6.43, something like that. I swear I didn't see this beforehand, but he does. It does get a run home, and they do take the lead 4-3. How could I predict that Goomba was going to do that? Well, he's hitting about 300, so I'm not surprised. And uh, somehow hitting worse than him, uh, probably about 3 for 22 or some shit like that, is Green Koopa. And he will make it to 6-3. Monty's still able to get it there, and that will be the end of the inning. They still are able to get 3 thanks to a lot of bases Mr. getting down by a run. They are 3-3. Three and three. They would really like to stay above the Bowser Jr. rookies who could take the lead over them. Deep to left field, it's off the cracker, the, the cracker thwomp. And so it's just a single. Remember, folks, head-to-head -head re uh, record is the first tiebreaker. It does take precedent over run differential. I know, that's, Tristan, that's this ballpark, man. That's this ballpark. Head-to-head uh, record is the difference. Triple play! Lined out to Green Koopa. He tags the bag, throws it to second, and gets them all out. And they still have the lead. What a triple play by Green Koopa. It's how that makes a difference in the standings and kind of want to be able to put it in Excel automatically. There's a quick double play. Way caught out of position. Green Magic Koopa makes that happen, and we are still a one-run game through four innings here. Game of the night. Here is Tristan. That one is over the plate. Deep to right center. They could be there in time, though. We'll get off the wall, though. It'll just be grabbed by Green Hammer Bro. The reason why they're 2-4. and four. Bowser has two home runs. He has 11 on the year. Can he make it three? Oh, it's foul. It's foul, folks. So, 0-2. Oh Good time for a paintball, maybe. It will be one. It swung on, and it will get down, so Bowser just getting a single. He also leads the league, I believe, in slugging average with a bob of 1.5. And now here is Blue Shy Guy. He does, he's slugging 166, meaning that about every time he goes to the plate, it's at least a single and normally at least a double. And uh, those home runs are going to help. Monty Mole is in a situation last time he did grind, uh, ground out for the 6-4-3. Big situation here with two on. Swings and misses on the first one. Kevin Wagner said, somebody called the cops. He just got robbed. Well, this time, though, this was not a robbery. This was uh, this was a plain sight out right there. Hammerbro is third in the league, tied with Petey Piranha at six home runs. Swing and a miss, strike one on Blue Magic Koopa. This ball is high. Could it be deep enough? It's close. Oh, it's foul. I thought that was fair. That sure as hell looked fair. But instead, they're going to get it down for another single. They had bases loaded with nobody out in that, uh, what it would have been the third inning, where they were able to take the lead. Three runs were scored. Bowser really needs to get out of this situation. Bottom of the fifth, they lead by one to the Bowser Jr. rookies at home. 0-1 here on Green Toad. Another bullet bill. Down the middle, 0-2. Going to use all three. And get him out. Strike three on Green Toad. One, two, three. Bullet bills will take him out of the way. Now you have a chance for Goomba to ground into a double play like he did last time. He'll line out in a one. Double play to keep it a one-run game. I expected a couple slump weeks and a couple losses in a row, and obviously that's why. 0-2, oh, it's lined out in another double play. Green Koopa has been doing this all night. 
trying to keep his team from losing at home again. And lined out to third. And at third, and they really need something else here. If they want to get an insurance run, they blew a one-run lead last week in the bottom or the top of the seventh. They could not get it back, and it looks like this could be the same situation. Oh, no, it's going to get down. And Green Dry Bones is going for the plate. They're going to get a one more because of the green shell. And Green Magic Koopa on an error will get to third. Huge error for them. And it could be a pivotal swing in this game. Out deep to center field. Perfectly timed green shell. And Green Dry Bones will get across home plate to make this a two-run game. Now you can make it a three-run game if you get one more. And quickly, Tristan says, fuck Blue Magic Koopa. Give me the red one. You're pissing me off. Bowser Jr., can he help this team out? He takes ball one. The 0-1 is swung on and straight to the other Blue Magic Koopa. Swing and a miss for strike one. Took a real cut at that one. The second one is lined out to Blue Magic Koopa. Double play just in time. The 6-3. And they're down to their last stop with Red Magic Koopa at the plate. Green Magic Koopa. They're all over here. All the colors pretty much. He's going to try and get them out. One out remaining. The first pitch taken for a strike. Can the Bowser Jr. rookies hop the Bowser monsters in the standings? We're going to have to find out in the next at-bat as that will be a single. And potentially, Bowser could tie the game if he hits a homer here. He's hit two tonight. Could he get a third and a twelfth of the season? Somehow, someway, it comes down to him again. Swung on! Deep to center field! Will they get there in time? No, they won't! Tie! Ball game! Bowser, the King Koopa, puts it on his shoulders again. And we're tied at five. And the Bowser Jr. rookies are going to need another inning. And one more run if they want to win this at home. Unbelievable. Green Magic Koopa getting tired. Two outs. The same situation as last time. Just with one strike, Bowser Jr. goes up there and smokes that thing to center field, and we're tied. Can they get any more? Could they take the lead going into the bottom of the seventh? They'll need Blue Shy Guy to do something down 0 2. He will. He will get it past Bowser Jr., and could he get to second? No, he won't. He's going to stay there, but a lot of issues here. Hold the phones, folks. Here's Monty Mole. Could Monty Mole do something crazy here? He's going to look at strike one. The 0-1. Swung on. And it does not get past Blue Magic Koopa. Tie ball game. Headed into the bottom of the seventh. The Bowser Jr. rookies have seen this before, but now they have the opportunity to walk it off in the last half inning. Or we could go to extras. They've experienced that before here as well and lost in eight to the Daisy Flowers earlier this season. The 0-1 on Green Hammer Bro. Could be it! Oh, but it's not going to be deep enough. It is a shallow hit to left center regulation. Star pitch is swung on on the ground. And that's going to be the 4-3. And we have extra innings here in the playroom again. We're tied at 5 thanks to a Bowser homer in the top of the 7th. And it's extra innings here in the Triple SL. I believe only for the third time I this year. I thought that was going to get down. But here's Blue Critter who is a certain candidate. He only has one home run this year. But could he get his second? He will. That one is not going to get caught. It's too fast. Goodbye. And they take the lead. Six to five. And could it be deja vu all over again for the rookies? This one was absolutely gone. I didn't even need to see them try for that. It was gone. And they take the lead. The Bowser Monsters. Six to five. Twelve on two outs. This one is a chopper on the ground. It will get to first, and they need one to keep this game alive or two to win it. Tough situation here for the Bowser Jr. rookies. Their back's against, their, against the wall, and potentially, if they lose this one, they've got a huge mountain to climb if they want to get to the playoffs. They would need to win a lot of games and then win another game against Bowser with that head-to-head -head record issue. But Goomba says, I'm going to show up and finally hit a single. Who's been trash all night and grounded and lined into double plays. Now you have Green Koopa. 
Nobody out here. Six to five. If Green Koopa somehow finds a homer here, I don't know if he will. It would be ball game. Lights out. 2-0 here on Green Koopa. 3-0 here on Green Koopa. I almost like walking him. That's a walk. Our second walk of the season. Red Magic Koopa walks the batter. Our second walk in the Triple SL. They are certainly rare, but that's a four-pitch walk for Green Dry Bones here. Dangerous situation now. He's going to get it down, and there's bases loaded with nobody away. They only need one to tie things and keep it going. But if Caden hits a homer here, it's over. Take strike one. You never know. Green Koopa could come around to the plate and end the game on a walk-off. 0-1. Swung on. It's out. For two, and that's going to be trouble now. Huge situation. It was a seemingly no-doubter. All you need to do is hit a grounder, and you're going to get the home batter. But now they have runners on the corners and only one out remaining. Here's Green Magic Koopa. Will he swing on this one? He will. Will it get down? It's going to. Tie game. Dry Bones is going for third, and now they have the winning run on third base. They get it deep out there. What a hit on the off speed. Gooba gets home. Bottom of the eighth. We're in extra innings. Now at the plate. It's Bowser Jr. the captain. All he needs is a single to end this game. They're going to pull the pitcher again. God, we're going deep in the bullpens tonight. And it's Monty Mole. Will Monty Mole find a way to get this done? Monty Mole has no pitching appearances. Steal for the plate. He's out of position. They like to do this, folks. The computers do. The 0-1. Will they steal for the plate again? Going for home. Trying to butt. But Green Magic Cooper's way out of position. Oh, but he's safe there at second. Hugely out of position. Down to last strike. Deja vu of last week. Swung on. That's the ball game! In a complete deja vu of last week where they lost on the last strike. They win it tonight on the last strike. 7-6 on a walk-off. Can you believe it? Bowser Jr. with the winning single. And your final score in the playroom. Bowser 6. The Junior Rookies 7. That would drop into 4-3. and three, And all of a sudden we're talking about the Diddy Monkeys needing to continue to win to stay in the playoffs. They had a buy spot a couple of games ago. They were considered pretty much one of the best teams in the league. Now they're down in the four spot. It could be interesting. I know Dave's going to give me a lot of shit for saying this, but that's where we're at tonight. He feels good going into this one, he told me, in a, a little conversation before tonight's game, but you just never know. He knows. We've seen games, a couple of them. Like the Bowser Monsters giving teams their first win. He really hopes that the Diddy Monkeys aren't giving the DK Wilds their first win of the season. The only way to know is to find out, and we start by playing ball here. In the second game of the night in the Triple SL, Job. Yellow Magic Koopa. So, the DK Wilds, again, they're not, uh, it's not like they don't know how to take the lead. They just don't know how to keep it right now. They've done five run first innings this year they know how to do it they just got to find out a way to keep it that one's going to get into center field that brings peter home because of the flowers buddy throw there's the bomb could have been in the parker in the park home run for boo inside the park home run for boo almost couldn't believe what i was seeing there it gets in the gap then the flower then the bomb, and it's an inside the park home run. Ben has, in the last three games, had a home run and eight hits. An incredible stretch for him. Like I said, gone eight for 13, and add that to the list, he's nine for 14. Comeback player of the year, honors for sure. Bases loaded, one out, top of the second for the DK Wilds. This is deep to left field. Look over the wall. Oh, man, baby DK almost had a grand slam, but he's going to get two home. And once again, we want to talk about deja vu in these games. The DK Wilds have a five-run inning to take the lead, 5 nothing. Now, folks, they just have to keep it. If they want to win their first game of the season, Dave says, I'm going to become the Joker. Buddy. Early game here. A lot of game left. We know this. We know how early it is in this in this league. 
Top of the second ain't nothing. That is going to be a 4-6 double play. Lined it out. Diddy's getting tired already. He gave up five there. A second in batting average of 591, but not really helping there. Pass ball. Swung on. Deep to left field. It is gone. Oh, no, it's off the wall. Okay, my bad. That one... That one really did look on. That's the first time I've done that this season. Besides uh, Bowser Jr., I thought it was gone. My Blue Yoshi does get aboard, folks. This one from Tiny Kong, though, for the Diddy Monkeys. Could this be it? Oh, no, it's grabbed by Baby DK. I didn't do it that time. I didn't do it that time. Diddy Monkeys <laughs> dropped three in a row. Dixie, can she do something about it? No, she can. It's lying to Yellow Magic Koopa. On the contact hit. Brown Critter, meanwhile, he had a nice deep swing earlier. And this is the deep drive. Deep to left center. And to it, potentially. He will. Homer, that time for Brown Critter. 7 to nothing for the winless DK Wilds. Will be a very, very good affair in our nightcap. This is swung on. It's going to get into the gap in right center field. Make it 8 nothing. These two have had a hell of a lot of issues. They let up and inside the Parker, and they give up a double here. They can't get to it. 8 nothing. top of the fourth here. The DK Wilds are firmly in command right now. That ball goes foul for Peter with two out. 0-1. This is swung on. It is grabbed by Yellow Yoshi. And so she took a drive as well right after him and has really been a surprise, all things considered. That one is lined out to short, and they have not scored a run in four innings. 67. He's had two singles. He's two for two in this ball game. Will this be down? It will get down. Make it three singles in this game, three for three. Diddy needs to get out of this inning. Red Koopa's on the mound right now. Their third pitcher. Very rare for them to get to him. This is a deep drive. Gone. Home run again for Brown Cutter. His second of the game. The floodgates have opened. We knew the DK Wilds potentially had this in him. It hits the foul torch. The torch. Shit changes in baseball. Team goes on. Teams go on slumps. And it looks like that's what the Diddy Monkeys are on right now. Deep drive by Dixie Kong is gone! Dixie Kong! She hits a home run! And it's no longer a shutout. It's Dixie's first home run of the year! How about that off the side of the torch? It's 11-1. to 1. Dixie's first home run of the year. How about a time for that? And King Boo knows what it's like to hit some home runs. And he's going to take a deep drive. Deep to right center. That one is not getting robbed either. Back-to-back -back home run shots. And it's 11-2. to Hold on. Home run this season as well. Donkey Kong getting tired. He's had a good start here. On the ground to Yellow Magic Koopa. That's the third. Two back-to-back -back home run shots here. In the bottom of the fifth, that is something. It is better than the nothing that they had. But they're here. still there. Brown Critter with two home runs today. An impressive showing from him. This one could be a third. It's deep. I don't know if it's deep enough, though. Red Koopa's underneath that calling for it. Oh, it's off the wall. It's off the wall. It is going to give Brown Critter to second. It did hit the wall. And so that is going to be a double for him. A great great affair but that will be the end of the inning it's six four he cannot complete the complete game don't blame him though it was a good affair from him boo is a great reliever to come in like mariano mariano rivera to come in and try to close this sucker out the 0-1 is swung on it is gonna get down and this could be 11-3 it will be 11-3 unless this throw gets there in time no it's safe safe at home the buddy throw doesn't work out for him 11-3 with one out. Again, they need a lot of help here, folks. The DK Wilds. This is just too big of a lead for them to blow, potentially. With Red Koopa at the plate. Red Koopa's not an amazing hitter. Could ground out to end it. He's not bad. He's 542. But he's down to his last strike here, at least in this 
at bat. The 0-2 is swung on, on the ground. But the power ball is going to keep him safe. But Dixie, she's in a pickle and tagged out at home. And they're one out of way. Unfortunately, the pow ball caught Dixie there. And she gets tagged out at home. I don't know why she didn't run back. And that is the ball game. The DK Wilds are winners in the Triple SL. An 11 run lead was just too big for them to lose. They win this one in impressive fashion. They had control of the Diddy Monkeys the entire way with some great hitting from everyone on the roster. Congrats to Peter. I know it's been a long time coming for him. Highly they doubt it, folks. The Daisy Flowers, when they're on, even when they're off, even when they lost, they still scored nine. And the Wario Muscles have had to play some close ones and win some close ones. And, of course, their one loss this season was a close one in a low-scoring affair against the Luigi Knights 4-2, to two, where they lost it. Let's play ball here, folks. In our third game of the night, the Warrior Muscles will bat first, and it'll be Yellow Toad, who is pretty impressive, to say the least, this season. Get it on here. On the deck of the cruiser, and it'll be a base hit for Yellow Toad. Yellow Toad starting things off in a good way. Again, this team's so good. That, is, I want to say, is uh, like Yellow Toad's maybe 15th hit of the year. Yeah, 16th, actually. That's pretty close. And Yellow Pianta follows up right after it with their 16th of the year as well. And it brings on Wario. Like I said, 20 for 26, a 769 average league leader in hits this season. And would you guess what? He's going to get his 21st, and it's going to get Yellow Toad potentially around for home with a buddy play. Close at the plate. Safe. Safe at home. Boy, was that a close one. But it's an RBI single for Wario to take the lead here on the cruiser. The Daisy Flowers are undefeated at home, but maybe this is the start of that undefeated streak ending too. Very early, though. It's a nice way to get it going. Runners on the corners, but nobody out for Parker, who has the most home runs of any me this season with two. This is a contact hit, though. It's going to be ground to a 6-4-3. It does get Yellow Pianta home to make it 2-0, but now there's two out. So not bad there. This is a good start. Good start for the Daisy Flowers, but God did, or excuse me, for the Warrior Muscles, but do the Daisy Flowers know how to come back? They know. It is not over until it's over with them. It took 14 runs to finally give them a loss. There's no doubt about it that this is going to go all the way and going to be close. 0-2 oh, here on Fire Hammer Bro, who's got three home runs to this team. Contact hit on the ground. That's going to be a ground out, folks. End of the inning. Nice two runs there. Will Funky Kong have any chance of catching up to him? Maybe with this one, it's a deep drive to center field, but Parker is underneath it. That is going to be the second out. Tagging up from second is Toadette. Play at the uh, third is safe. So she'll get on the corners here, so an opportunity to maybe steal one away if Boomerang Bro, who is batting 583, can get Toadette on base to home plate. The 0 1 here, splitter again. Wario loves to use these a lot, early and often. And God, is it working out. This is a pop-up to shortstop. No run score for the Daisy Flowers in the bottom of the first to maybe keep things alive and get it back to the top of the order for Yellow Toad, who had a hit. He will not have one, and that will be the end of the top of the second. Nice job by the Daisy Flowers to calm it down. This game remains to be closed. It's 2 nothing. And they have Blue Dry Bones, who has walked it off for them this season. Red Paratroopa. And Daisy, who has a home run of her own as well. Daisy is uh, bad about 435, which really sometimes the captains have struggled this season. She's been doing not bad. Now we got the field tilted a little bit as the boat has been rocked by the Big Bloopa. Red Paratroopa loves the crowd to plate, folks. And it works out that time for Red Paratroopa. Two on. Nobody out here for the Daisy Flowers. They're down two. And Daisy is up at the plate. And considering that she is batting left-handed, could go opposite field here. It would make sense. 
This one could get over the wall. It's close. Yellow Toad is going to get to it, though. What a hustle by Yellow Toad. As I predicted, it goes left field as a left, uh, left-handed left batter. Thought that that was going to be a homer. But it was not long enough, and Yellow Toad gets to it. This time for Ethan, it will get into the gap, and it could be Blue Dry Bones coming home. It could be a tie ball game. That's not going to get there in time. It's 2-1 to one as an RBI single for Ethan gets Blue Dry Bones home. Able to prevent the other run from coming home here. But now with just one out and runners on the corners, chance for the Daisy Flowers to tie the ball game here with Toadette who had a nice hit to start things off perfectly down the middle in her first at-bat. The first pitch is swung on. This is going to get in the gap as well. They'll continue. Red Paratroopers coming home. We got a tie game. Two apiece. Here on the deck of the cruiser in the bottom of the second. Start pitch down the middle. Straight down the middle for a strike. This one, though, is a deep drive. Deep to right field. It's going to stay fair. It's gone. Yo, Pianta with the go-ahead homer. Yellow Pianta's fourth home run of the season. Deep in, into the dark night sky on the cruiser. Three to two. Here's Wario, who has been a hit machine, got his 21st hit of the year. Take strike. Strike one. Hey, people, join us. Thank you so much for joining us here. Thanks for spending some of your time today with us. That is going to be Wario's 22nd hit of the year. We'll solidly maintain the hitting lead. And now Parker with nobody out. Again, folks, stick around for the live standings. Again, we'll have three more games tomorrow to finish out. That's a 6-4-3. Nice job to get two out and keep it a one-run game, at least for now. I just need one to get away from this one. It's not going to be an out. That one's perfectly over the head of Daisy. And so Yellow Magic Koopa will get aboard. That's Yellow Magic Koopa's, I think, 13th of the year. Fire Hammer Bro knows what it's like to hit home runs, especially in this ballpark. The 0-1 is swung on. It's deep. It's not going to get over the wall, but it's a great hit. It's going to get Yellow Magic Koopa to third. That's a great single to keep things alive with two out, trying to add to the lead against one of the best teams in the league. Toadsworth. I know he's not always the greatest choice, but he does have seven hits this year. You just never know. Star pitch on the first one, and Toadsworth is, can't even react to that one. That's a strike. This is a contact hit. That's going to get in the gap, and Toadsworth will tie the game. Or pardon me, Toadsworth will make this a two-run game. Nice job by Toadsworth to get the single. Get some home. Toadsworth, respect to you, my kind sir. Red Noki, here top of the fourth. Can she continue this run? No, she can't. Nice job, Toadette, to get the 4-3. The 0-1 is swung on, and it's going to be in the gap. Nice job to finally figure out the splitter. The first member of this Daisy Flowers team to figure it out tonight. And that will be it for Wario. A not bad affair from him, allowing two. He's allowed his team to stay in the lead, thanks to his hitting, of course. Just two and two-thirds from him on the mound. Red Paratroopa, deep to right center field. It's robbed at the wall by Parker. You could have guessed that one for sure. Big matchup in the nightcap. The Birdo Bows are at Mario Stadium at nighttime. Like I said, good teams. You expect to get them. Uh, there, and oh, big error. Blue Noki gets home. Big error from Wiggler. Yellow Toad is going to get home. And that's going to be 6-2. to two. Should They got two on. Nobody out. Toadette's had two already. Looks at ball one. Nice eye. Second one is swung on. And it's grabbed by Fire Hammer Bro. And they're way out of position. Triple play. Way out of position. Knew that was going to be a triple play. Nice job for the 6-4-3. Triple play to end the inning. Wow. So, no score there for the Daisy Flowers. Bad base running. Got way out of position there. Fire Hammer Bro. Deep to right field. You can call it 7-2. That's over the deck. Goodbye. His fourth home run of the year. The Wario Muscles trying to be the first team here 
to win on the road. And they're up 7-2. to They got a five-run lead. Incredible game. It was an absolutely incredible game. You can see some highlights. Oh, oh, no spoilers, please. All right, that was a little early. Sorry, 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 sorry. I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. Don't listen to me. Mute me. Just don't even say it. Mute me. I didn't say anything. Shit. I feel bad. I already put some of the spoilers out on TikTok, but that's my bad. Go back and run it back. Two out here. There's an infield fly. It's Yellow Pianta. Damn. I always feel bad for spawning. It. But, hey, that's why you got the... You, you can rewind at any time on YouTube. I know you're on Twitch. You can go on YouTube, rewind. That is the third out of the inning. Yeah. Wiggler. Again, Ethan's team trying to go to 6-1. and one. Somebody's going to be 6-1 and one at the end of this game, and somebody's going to be 5-2. and two. Big sweep from Wiggler! Could be his first home run of the year. Yeah, no doubter. Goodbye, Wiggler! I was wondering when he'd take that step to being a power hitter. He's batted so well this season, and on the off speed, absolutely smokes that ball over the deck. Wiggler, first of the season, 7-3. Up 7-3. And have a chance to go to 6-1. and one To tie the Mario Fireballs, who have a game in hand, and play my Birdo Bows tomorrow at Mario Stadium, where they have like to win. Firehammer Bro is going to do it again, maybe. Yeah, it's gone. Gone. Firehammer Bro with the homer again. And it's 8-3. to three. Eight to 8-3. With another shot that just gets over the deck. Funky Kong is so upset by it. He knows that his team is in dire straits. Toadsworth takes strike one with nobody out here in the top of the seventh. Now there's one out. He'll line it out to Daisy, who's had a very nice night in the uh, second base spot after pitching for a little while. Red Noki not going to get into the glove of Daisy. Red Noki will have another hit. Finally, maybe adjusting to this team. It's Red Noki for the Warrior Muscles. Here's Blue Noki, who I believe had the hit as well. 0-1 here as Toadette is on the mound. This one is going to get in the gap. So the Noki, surprisingly, it's, I think, I, I don't know if we've ever said this, that two Nokis in a row get on base. But here we are. We got one out for Yellow Toad, who is always a threat as well. A sneaky threat at the plate. Five-run game, but now it's not going to be. They don't get the double, though, thanks to the green shell. They just get the one. And so there's two away for Yellow Pianta, who I believe had a run and a home run earlier. That's going to get down. Bases loaded with two out. If you want to win this game, you need an out right here. But this is not the person to face. He has so many hits. He did fly out, though, in the last at-bat. It's possible. This is a... Game hinging at bat, and he's going to use the bomb to add to the lead. It's going to get down and explode. It's 9-3, to three, now 10-3 to three with good base running from the Nokis. They get home. It's a seven-run game. You got to pull Toadhead at this point, and bloopers coming in, and this could be a home loss for the Daisy Flowers, just like the Diddy Monkeys who've dropped a couple in a row, just like... The Bowser Monsters who dropped a couple in a row. The Daisy Flowers could be in threat of dropping two in a row and fall into five and two on the season. They need seven or three. And the Wario Muscles are going to potentially improve to six and one and be amongst the top of the league, but not yet. Blooper will add on a nice little hit for himself. Here's Wiggler, who had his first home run of the season earlier tonight. Contact hit is lined out for the third out, and that is the ball game. For the first time this season, the Daisy Flowers lose at home, and the Wario Muscles chug on. They have only lost one this season, and they are going to be top of the table if the, Wario, if the Mario Fireballs don't win tomorrow. It's first match of the night. Hey, we're going to get it going. I'm on time. We're getting it rolling. Make sure you let everybody know. Uh, if you got a team, you don't got a team. If you're picking up a team, start. Maybe it's time to start bandwagoning. You kind of know which teams might have a chance. And hell, we're finding out that some teams that we didn't think have a chance 
might have a chance as well. And the Waluigi Spitballs could be one of them. But, hey, don't count out the Peach Monarchs. They've got the pieces. They can get some people on base. And the last time they were here, they got a victory. We'll see if they can do it tonight in the Garden in game number one. Let's get it on. Get things going. But now a little bit dangerous spot here. First and second with two out and a nothing nothing game for Brown Critter. It's going to get down and the bases are going to be loaded here. Tough situation now for Blue Critter to handle with Petey Piranha at the plate who has six home runs on a year. The first pitch is down the middle on the ground, but it's past Paragumba. And they're going to get on the board with Green Oki getting home just past the glove. A uh, Paragoomba, so close, really gave it an effort. But Green Noki gets home, and that's our first score of the game. It's one to nothing in favor of Waluigi. With Tim up at the plate now, like I said, not batting amazing, but hey, bases loaded situation. Swung on, on the ground, grabbed, and that will be the third out. Paragoomba's really put in an effort. So green dry bones and the regular dry bones have been denied by Brown Critter. The combo of them are only one for four. When they both bat about 700. A surprising development here as we got a low scoring one. I am an Regard. idiot. I, uh, I did not uh, pay too much attention in my uh, Spanish classes. Not going to lie. I wish I did. This is going to get down second base. Probably a triple. That's what I'm talking about, folks. In the garden, this purple toad will get to third thanks to the triple. Just because how this ballpark is with the ice, it's so hard to get him in the gaps. That a double, a single can turn into a double, and a double can turn into a triple. But that's going to be lined up. Double play! Double play! Nice job to quickly get that ball out of his glove. Rising effort from Green Noki, who's now 2 for 2 after being just 4 for 17 this season. And how about Waluigi? Adding to it as well. Getting a hit here. Bases loaded. Nobody out. Time to pull Blue Critter in my opinion. But man, he's going to stay in there. I do not know if I like this, folks. This is swung on. In the gap. This is going to be a lot of bases. There's one, two. Waluigi's coming around for three. This is absolutely going to be a triple, at least, if Brown Critter gets there. Triple for Brown Critter will bring in three. And it's four to nothing. Perfectly in the gap. I don't know why Peach didn't pull Blue Critter in that spot. That is an impossible situation to put somebody in. Bases loaded with nobody out. It was a great effort from Blue Critter, all things considered, until that point. I just don't think that's the position you want to put him in. And now he will be taken out and replaced with Peach. Three run, three RBI triple for Brown Critter. His first triple of the year. And now it's Petey Piranha with a man on third and nobody out in a deep ballpark. Line drive grabbed by Jeff. Nice double play again. He had that error, but man, he's turned two immaculate double plays. And that might just cap the scoring here in the fifth with Tim at the plate. He'll take a ball, though. 1-0. That's on the ground. 4-3, no problem. And that will be the end of that half inning. But base is loaded situation. Brown Critter steps up, Peach. who has only had four hits this year. Nice job for her on the ground, though, with two out. Nice dig by Tim. To keep things scoreless and keep the 4 0 lead for the Spitballs after five. Blue Yoshi, and again, a bit disappointing compared to some other ones. And you can just go ahead and add to that. Line out and then catching the player at first for the 4 3. That's the end of that section. Bottom of the six coming up. You got the dry bones and Blue Pianta find a hit. Like I said, a bit disappointing this season, but a great opportunity to maybe start to wipe that memory out of people's heads. It's going to get down. But Green Dry Bones does not choose to go for that. I don't blame him because it's a little bit hard to tell if that was going to get down. But I wish it would have had better awareness at the base paths. That would have helped. The Paragoomba with a star hit is going to get Green Dry Bones home and make it a 4-1 game. They finally get on the board, and Paragoomba adds another hit. Only coming into this game, batting 278, one of the team's worst hitters, but a nice job. Good use of the star uh, hit there. And now Blue Critter. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Bottom of the sixth. The Monarchs trying to find a comeback at home here. Second pitch is swung on. It looks like a pop fly, but you know how this ballpark is. Got to stay under it. He does. Tagging up, though. It's a sack fly. It'll get Dry Bones home. It's 4-2. to two. Got a shot here. They have one more half inning, potentially. And they still have two runners on here. This is a nice way to cut the lead. 
Getting the one from a nice hit by Paragumba, then the sack fly. Red Koopa will likely be done soon. Don't expect him to stay in through the seventh inning, but has had a nice little stint here to trade off between Waluigi. That is the second out. That's another deep fly out. And like I said, it's so difficult in this ballpark. Uh, the pressure is on when it comes to some of these hits and these pop flies out there. So very nicely done. Joe K says, I live for moments like this. That's right. A close ball game, close to the end of the game, bottom of the sixth. This is what we live for. Shocking. Star hit for Waluigi, and he still grounds out the second. Now Brown Critter is deep into center field. Like I said, in other ballparks, this might be a homer, but it gets down. What a mistake by Blue Critter. Just gets over his head, and that's going to get one home. That's an error. Unfortunate there. I know how hard it is in this ballpark, but Green Noki gets home thanks to the slip-up, and that adds a run to the deficit that the Peach Monarchs are going to have to get back from, and really, it could be more. Now with Petey Piranha. Petey Piranha on the ground. Great save by Jeff to limit the damage. Only, Only the glove of Tim. But you do have two people who you love to see on the base pass. Green Dry Bones has gotten a couple since starting off a little bit poor. The 0-1 is taken down to the last strike. The 0-2. Red Koopa delivers. Swing and a miss. Strike three. That's the ball game. Red Koopa strikes him out at the plate. And the Waluigi Spitballs, after starting 0-4, are going to improve to 3-4. A three-game win streak for Tim's team and a critical win on the road. They're in the right direction. Folks, it's the second game of the night. Luigi Knights on the road at the park. Let's get it rolling here. It's the first time we've been here in the daytime in a while. It's always been nighttime. It's my team and the Yoshi Eggs. It's daytime now, baby. The clouds are out still. Let's watch a ball game. One of the best hitting me's in the league with one home run, betting 478. He gets on base as well, and he's at second. Speaking of good hitters, fire hammer, bro. But just like that, a nice grab by the first baseman, Red Pianta. That is no run scored. Is, uh, again, kind of carrying. Has the most hits of anyone on this team, which is very surprising considering the roster, and he's going to continue with it. And there's the green shell. Red Shy Guy's got a chance to turn for home, but they get it in in time. So runners on the corners here for the Yoshi Eggs with Baby Mario only being one for six. But I was going to say Eli is now 13 for 21. Is one of the best hitting me's in the league as well and really is the best hitter on this team that contains a critter and a Pianta. It's very surprising. One and one here on Baby Mario, looking for a big hit from him. It's on the ground. Will Green Critter grab it? No, it's off his glove. It's not going to be an error. That's a single, an RBI single for Baby Mario to give them the lead one to nothing. I think it just got past him. It was a good effort, but nice job by Baby Mario showing up in the moment and getting the run. That's one nothing, and can Baby Luigi with two out find a way to produce a miracle and keep him going? First pitch over the plate, but Baby Luigi's not deciding to swing at that one. That's a strike 0-1. This one is a deep drive. This is to the warning track, but the train went by. Bananas, nice play by Mitch to adjust. Avoid the bananas and kick it over to Luigi to keep this a one nothing game. But Baby Mario has the RBI single, and that's the difference. And this is a good person to have up. Potentially to add to the lead, Red Pianta does not have a homer this year, and this team only has two. One from Red Critter, one from Eli. Contact hit, though, by Red Pianta will load the bases. Baby Luigi thought about going home there, and I wouldn't have blamed him because it's a close game. Now Red Critter, who has one home run this season, takes a big shot. At, oh, I thought he was going to swing at that one on one. Dark Bones is in a tough spot here. Got to get him out. It's the off-speed pitch. It's swung on. It's a line drive. That'll add another one. 2 nothing. Now go for home, and she is not even going to be close. Will they get her in a pickle? No. Safe. I don't like the fact these teams do not know how to play a pickle. Should have got her out at third. But Baby Luigi gets home, and it's 2 nothing. and God... Based on how this game is going, a run is massive in the context of the game. Now, Yoshi, who is not used to star hit all game, be a good time to use it, but not this time. Green Magic Koopa getting it done, continuing to be a defensive star for the Luigi Knights, but they allow one in a bases-loaded situation with two out. 
and it's two to nothing with two innings remaining. I don't know if we can change the base running AI. I'd have to look. There might be something in the in there, but it might be one of those stats that when I was reading about modding this game, you don't really want to change too much. There's two. Not going to be a triple play, but it's 6-4. It's not great. Uh, you know, I think the this is on the highest level computer, by the way. We're not playing the level one computer. Like, these are level four CPUs doing this shit. So, that is going to be a line out to left field. That is, unfortunately, six straight zeros. Luigi Knights, again, stranding a couple with Green Critter up at the plate. They fly it out, and they're going to need to hold here if they want to try and keep this close. Dark Bones is still in there. Don't blame him. It's been a good performance from Dark Bones, but his offense is not helping him out here. This is a deep drive by Red Paratroopa. It's close at the wall. It hits the back of the wall, and it's going to be a stand-up double for Red Paratroopa. Only his fifth hit potentially of the year. Came in averaging 200. That is it for Dark Bones. Now it's time for Luigi. I think that's a smart decision. Luigi threw 12 and a third as an ERA of 738. That's about middle of the road, I would say. The 1-1 one -one here on Red Shy Guy desperately needing to get an out here. This is on the ground. Grabbed by Green Magic Koopa. Can he get him? No. Oh, he's out. He's out. That was really close. That looks safe. Boy, I would love to see a replay on that one. Red Paratroopa does get to third, though. Oh, it's over the head of Green Magic Koopa. But Green Paratroopa doesn't run. And now we got runners on the corners. What the hell's going on here? And Baby Mario here at the plate. Bottom of the six. Two-nothing game. They're going to try to squeeze Bunt. And a steal. Nice steal by Eli getting to second. That's a great... That's an example of good base running, okay? Now they're going to steal. Try to squeeze Bunt again. This might just work. It will work. It's going to get another one in. That's a squeeze bunt, a sacrifice bunt by Baby Mario to make it 3 to nothing, And that could be a critical bunt in the context of this game. This is a style of game that the Yoshi Eggs needed to play to win this one. That will be that. But that's an extra run that could be all that she wrote here. A chance to win this one at home. In a close one. The off speed is in for a strike. Luigi has a chance. If you can get Luigi on, you have a chance to get Dark Bones in. But that's jammed on the ground. And the Yoshi Eggs are winners at home. Three to nothing. In a defensive battle with some great pitching by Eli. Eli completes the game and completes a shutout. Only, I believe, the second shutout by a pitcher in a complete game in league history. Welcome back, folks, to our final game of the night here in the Triple SL. I'm Alec Rome. Thank you so much, folks, to the people that have tuned in. Remember, we got a full game week tomorrow. Game week number eight starts again tomorrow, right around probably 6.30 again. Maybe 6, trying to go a little bit earlier because we got more games. Um, and I need to get some in my stomach before that. Maybe 6.30. We'll, we'll let you know. Follow us everywhere that we post pretty much. Um, and we'll get some updates for you there. Um, yeah, this is going to be a slobber knocker of a game. Uh, the Morrow Fireballs know how to score in their own stadium. The last time that they were here potentially, I want to say, was the 29-6 thwacking of the Bowser Jr. rookies. And since then, they've just maintained that steady climb at the top of the league, but they did end up losing one of their games and were no longer undefeated. They, of course, lost to the Daisy Flowers in a close one at the uh, Cruiser 6-5. to five. That was in game week number four. Uh, tonight, they face a just as difficult challenge from a Birdo Bose team that not only show that they have the ability to pitch and have great defense, they have the second best uh, team ERA in the league at four between pretty much a uh, duo with Birdo and Red Magic Koopa who have a combined ERA of about four through pretty much all of the innings pitched for this uh, this team. And the Birdo Bows also against opponents allow a league best 369 when it comes to the average. But you're also facing one of the best hitting teams in the league, the best hitting team in the league, period. 557 hitting average for the Mario Fireballs, 789 slugging average, taking over the Bowser Monsters, who, of course, are on that three-game skid. Best offense versus the best defense in the league. What more could you ask for to wrap up game day number seven? Folks, let's get it rolling here, starting off with our starting lineups for the away team, the Birdo Bows. Again, not much changing. The only change, it's Red Badge of Koopa's time to start, but these two pretty much carry the committee 
They have done so well as a combo together. Red Magic Koopa has only pitched 12 innings per se out of uh, the total, probably 39. And Birdo is able to carry it the rest of the way. And I don't expect anything to change with tonight. But when you have teams that like uh, the Mara Fireballs that can hit really well, who knows? They may have to go to a third option somewhere down the line. And that could be really dicey. Uh, because we just don't see them do it very often, folks. The last time that they did it, again, I don't even remember if they have done it. They had Red Shy Guy in for only a third of an inning, and that might have been just the last out of the game. But they have not had to go to a third pitcher very often, and so I think tonight could be uh, no more likely time than ever that they will have to. But otherwise, the rest of the batting lineup is the, cha the same. The 2 3 4 section accounted for plenty of runs in their defeat of the Daisy Flowers. They were able to go hit, hit, homer, hit, hit, homer, thanks to Red Critter, who jumped up in the home run charts and is probably one of the three stars of game day number six. Meanwhile, for the home team, Mario Fireballs. Lineup is all the same. Mario starting again for the second game in a row. Why would you change it? This team is always difficult. They have chemistry all the way down. Uh, it's by design, and they drafted well, and obviously it's been working out for them, but... This is one of those games that if they're going to lose, it could be right now. But if they win, they will jump to the top of the league table. They'll hop over the Mar Wario Muscles again, folks. Make sure you don't go anywhere at the end of this game. We'll give you the live league standings. And take a look at tomorrow's matchups. We'll analyze them, talk about them a little bit. But here we go in our final game of the night. Nighttime under the lights at Mario Stadium. It's the Birdo Bows and the Mario Fireballs. Still batting 423 with 11 hits. Here's Mario, who's 15 for 24. Batting 625 with a homer. Got to get a ground out if you are this team. Nice eye by him, though, for a ball. You really would like to see a double play ground out here. Line drive one, two, could it be three. It is three. Triple play. What a triple play again. 643 to get them all out, and that's what you need. Exactly what you were looking for to clear the bases and end the top of the first. Right up there. Each of these three hitters can smoke the ball deep to left field. Goodbye. Green Critter opens the scoring with a homer, his fourth of the year. They're not going to get to him. And at Mario Stadium, it's an early lead for the Bows. I was just going to say, with that hit, this team has combined, this three, the two, three, four, have combined for 42 hits on the year for the Birdo Bows out of the team's total 102, now 103, and make it 104 with King K. Rule getting on first. Luckily, they're in time. And Red Critter had two home runs in the defeat of the Daisy Flowers, has just been so consistent. Five home runs on the year with 15 RBIs, slugging 133. And it could continue. That's going to be in the gap. That's one of this team's weaknesses is the ball's in the gap. King K. Rule will trot to third, and they have runners on the corners. Could it be an early deficit for the Mario Fireballs to dig out of? Right now it is one with Alec Mee at the plate with one home run, batting nine for 24, 375, and looks at ball one, luckily. So one and one here, even count. Strike call there. I don't know if I like that one, folks. One and two for the fastball down the middle. And it's over the head of Blue Toe, but not going to go home. There's a pow ball. Throws home. I don't know what the hell happened there. Should have thrown to second. Would have gotten the out because Red Critter was decapitated by the pow ball. Instead, it's bases loaded for Red Shy Guy, who will get it over to Blue Pianta. I thought it'd be over his head. And that's a double play. They only get one. 60, like... If you name a player, they're probably batting above 430 for this team. That includes the extra red me, but that's going to be a 4-6-3 double play to end the inning. And if you're talking about a team who has the capability defensively of stopping a juggernaut, it's the Birdo Bows. And so far, they've held them scoreless through two times at the plate. Here is Birdo. Birdo is not bad. She's 500 and could have her first home run of the year, but will get robbed. They don't try for it. Birdo with her first home run of the year, solo shot to start the bottom of the second. I was just going to say she doesn't have a homer this year, but that is no longer a true statement. Two to nothing on the road. A game that didn't matter because it was 29 to six, but now King K. Rule 
is on the plate with four home runs on the year, and it's deep. You can say goodbye to that ball. Gone. Home run for King K. Rule, and it's 5 nothing. Second deck smashed ball by King K. Rule. Five to nothing here on the road for the Birdo Bows. And now Red Critter, who knows how to hit home runs, is going to hit a deep one to center field. It's going to get off the wall. That'll be a single for him. And the effort, the two run rally continues. But this time it's not the Mario Fireballs doing it. The first pitch for me is a strike. Long game to go here. This one is going to just be foul on the right side of the first baseline. 0-2 oh, on me. No star pitch used on the ground. Pass Blue Pianta. And they still have two aboard. Got to get out of here. You must get out of here if you're the Mario Fireballs. Don't want to get into a huge deficit like this. They're already down five here with an 0-1 oh, count. Red Shy Guy it gets the Blue Toad, and they do get him wow. out in there. That was close as well. I don't know about that one, but they called a strike. Does Lakitu? This is a contact hit, but it's not going to get down. That is three innings in a row for the Mario Fireballs with no run scored. And guess who is up? Who just hit a homer? It's Green Critter who has four. Over the plate. This one's going to get deep towards the wall. And they're going to get a couple home here. Unless the buddy pass makes a difference. No, but there was the shell. Play at the plate. And now we got a pickle. One got home at 6 nothing, But they don't get to him in time. I don't understand why these teams have not learned how to make a pickle. Play the pickle. He's safe at third. Pulling Mario. Now Andrew's in there with the home run hitter for the last inning in. Star pitch, off speed, it's swung on, and it's foul, but it's deep foul. Oh, man. 0-1 on King K. Rule could blow this game open like they did with the Daisy Flowers, but now down 0-2, maybe got to focus on a contact hit. He's going to go power. He's not worried about it. He's absolutely not worried about it. It's at the wall. Great slam by King K. Rule. And the Birdo Bows are cracking one open on the Mario Fireballs here. On the road. Absolutely not getting to that one either. It is 10 2 0. We talked about deja vu with the Bowser Jr. rookies happening last night where they were able to win on the last strike when they lost on the last strike. Well, tonight it is the Mario Fireballs that are looking at a deep deficit early. This will end the inning, though, as it's a ground out two straight times. Uh, but it was a good good job there, nonetheless. One out here with two aboard. Red Magic Koopa getting a little bit tired. you got to watch out for this. 1-0. and oh. This could be dangerous. This one over the plate. Is it going to get down? It will. And so bases are loaded. And Blue Pianta thought about going home, but is not going to get there. And now I think this is the time. Red Magic Koopa's not going anywhere. Can you just ground out and get out of this inning? And a bases loaded jam. He will use a star swing. It's going to get in the gap. R Blue Pianta at least is going to get home, I think. Buddy play, though. Play for the plate. It might be it. Close play. Mario is going to be safe at the plate. Mario safe at the plate, and it's 10 to 2. Nice job there. Those plates always tend to be in favor of the, the player running home, it seems like. It was a good effort nonetheless, but the close play going to Mario Fireballs. They score two here with the uh, big man doing what he knows how to do, which is uh, grow uh, in random spots. That's it for Red Magic Koopa. Still a good effort nonetheless, but a lot of those two and a lot of hits. And you got to put Birdo in there. She is more than capable of carrying this game to the end. Strike one here. John Vanover, thank you so much for joining. Appreciate you being here. Over the head of Red Magic Koopa. And there's a boo item. That's going to be 10 to 3. Could be 10 to 4 if Yellow Toad tries to go for home. He will try to go for home and he's going to be safe. 10 to 4. RBI uh, double. 2 RBI double. There by Red Me. So, a little bit closer. Nice response from the Mario Fireballs with one out. They know how to do this. And now you got to be sweating a little bit if you're the Birdo Bows. Got to get out of the inning. Here's Red Toad. Birdo's going to use a star pitch, and a lot of people have an issue with that. Thanks, John, for the nice comment. I hope you're doing well tonight. We just watched some baseball, baby. It's the final game of the night. We got more tomorrow on YouTube or Twitch. 
here at 6.30. That's Central Time. Strike three looking on Red Toad. And that's going to be the second out. Nice job by Birdo. She gets another strikeout this year. Getting towards rivaling Bowser. And she's using the star pitches at the right time. It's been one of my biggest critiques. And a star swing by Andrew. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. 0-2. Oh now a star pitch again. Could get it be three. Here it is. Could she get out of the inning? Swing and a miss. Strike three again. Get him out of here. Wow. Same situation as it was before. A dangerous one. And they're going to pull Andrew before making the same mistake again. They put Red Toad in there. And again, I really got to look and see uh, if this team has really had to go this far down. They got Red Yoshi, though. This is a good person to have aboard. They're trying to get out of the inning. Star pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. Almost would prefer, uh, as an impartial owner, that Red Yoshi just get out of here. But it's over the head of Blue Toad. Bruno's going to get home. Gray Shy Guy is going to go back to third. And that's an RBI single. RBI single. Again, only three players have pitched for this team. This is Red Toad's first pitching appearance. And Green Critter has had a, a homer tonight. A big shot. Wrong person to have up at the plate. This is deep to center field. Watch out for the boo ball. You could get a sack fly here to add one, and it's an out. They're going to tag up, though. Gray Shy Guy's getting home, and they add two more. It's 12 to 4. John Vanover said, why is he using his staff? I mean, hey, it works. It works real well. He has got he gets good hits with it. I know it looks weird, but hey, if you, you do what you do. Green K. Rule had a grand slam earlier. He's going to continue this absolute mauling. Of the baseball. How about a three-run shot to go with it? Dink it. And sink that ball in the bay right out by Mario Stadium. Gone. 15 of four. Wow. What a game here. Two out here for Red Critter. 15 to four. The Birdo Bows. In the same stadium where Mario put up 29 for a league record scoring affair. Has put up 15. Two out here, bottom of the fourth. Just got to get out of the inning if you're the Mario Fireballs. But God, that's not what's happening. Red Critter's going to turn for third. And the two out rally continues. Here is Red Shy Guy. This is on the ground. That's in the gap as well. Make it 16-4. to four. John Vanover is just reacting. It's fun to watch somebody react to things as that just a little, they're a little further behind than, than I am. So that's that's hilarious. Birdo's going to add to it. How about me getting home? The scoring is going to keep going here. 17-4. to four. Rivaling what happened here earlier in the season, but the Birdo Bows are putting up Scoring with two out. Star swing. That's on the ground. Make it 18. Keep it rolling, baby. Here with one out for, I believe, what is going to be a Pianta. Birdo is getting tired. Luckily, you have plenty of padding here, though. But yellow Pianta, contact hit, straight to Red Magic Koopa. How about the double play? 4-6. Get him out of here. That's going to be another scoreless inning. And it is still out of reach. And guess what? They batted around enough that King K. Rule is going to be back up again with a shot to add a third home run in the game. He hit a grand slam earlier, which I forgot to clip. And now a three-run shot to go with it. That's it out. Here's Green Critter. Over the plate for a strike 0-1 on Green Critter. Again, bottom of the fifth. Goodbye to that one, too. See ya. Second of the game for Green Critter. His sixth of the season. And it's a home run derby tonight. Oh, yeah. Home run derby in Mario Stadium right now. 19-4. With King K. Rule at the plate. Strike one on him. He's had two home runs. And this is not going to be a home run, but it will get down, and it's going to be a single. That man has been hitting like crazy tonight. Nothing's changed. 
Here's Red Critter. Swung on. Goodbye to that one. I don't need, even need to tell you what's going to happen to that ball, too. Red Critter with his sixth of the year. They got six goddamn home runs tonight. This is a murder. Malice at Mario Stadium. <laughs> I'm sorry. I Look, hey, Andrew did it to somebody this season. Now he knows how it feels. 21-4 to four in the bottom of the fifth. Can we get the scoring record from him? Can we get to 30? i love to see it. That's the second out, though, at the bottom of the fifth. John Vanover says, can you please make more? We'll try to. I'd love to, you know, maybe in the in the future. We got our team set right now, but I'd love to uh, uh, maybe change up teams or, or have a, maybe we do a, a special game for you, uh, some sort of all-me game. Uh, maybe we can make that part of All-Star or not. I actually like that idea, to be quite frank with you. I think I like a, like an all-me team with all the owners versus some of the better teams in the league. So I like that idea. Not going to say no, John. I like the idea. I'm going to think about that. I might add that to the All-Star game. All-Star game is going to come up sometime in the next couple weeks. That's a line out. That will finally end things in this part. Blue Toad had a nice hit earlier. It's probably two for three or something like that. Takes a look at strike one here. Potentially a chance to finish the game. Grabbed by Red Magic Koopa. And that is the ball game. The 4-3 double play. And this was malice at Mario Stadium, if I've ever seen it. It was the right way last time for the Mario Fireballs when they beat the Bowser Jr. rookies 29-6. But the Birdo Bows walk into their stadium and hang 23 runs. And they improve to 5-2 on the season and take a huge leap towards a first-round bye.